everybody, this is James the Bow on Discovering Season 3 and we've got a special guest in the house today. We've got the Black Men's Group in and Chase Johnson Lynch. How are you doing Patrick Graham? How are you doing Jay Blades? How what's are you up? doing Chase Johnson what's Lynch? Up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Good to see you. Yeah, well this is a special today anyway and the reason it's a dedication into Brother Renoko Rashidi, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. I consider him as a Grandmaster, just like Dr. Ben, Dr. John Edward Clark and many more. And today we're going to discuss on his life. You know, he was born 1954, August the 16th, and he passed August the 2nd, 2021. And this is a person, a big, big influence on my life and all the work I've done around the world, visiting indigenous peoples. Also as well, the conscious on African history. And obviously Patrick Graham was with me on the, when well, he was in both events, the first and the second. Patrick gave him a lift to back to the station you know these are great memories that we all have and uh, chase got to see him on the zoom yeah and obviously um jay blades obviously you know you might be not aware of Renoko is, but yeah, this I, is a real giant of a legend yeah this is the thing i, I know, know the name i know who he is I, I just don't know a lot about his history and all of those types of things i it's it's the same with a, a lot of people it's you know he's a, he's a big name so yeah. he can't just be unknown you know what i mean okay well, so i'm here to to learn yeah. from you guys basically and and get more information well what i what i think is good about that jay is, is that like i had no clue as who he was as well i mean i mean being here for several years i've actually met renoko before um james um um had him at the caribbean center because like uh as as such a giant um you know he's come to liverpool over many years and um and everything i remember there was a time um with slavery remembrance um, that he came and did a talk okay. and stuff like that, and um, we're educating people about like reparations and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But also too is here on our um, program here, discovering. Um, we did a big Zoom with um, Renoko where we got to actually um, hear from the man himself, you know, and 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 um, see various um, different adventures that he is uh, taking part in, and mm -hmm. so. It was a very eye-opening experience for me, which I hope that it would be for you and for all those watching because um, there's so many different stories he has. And you can't encapsulate them in a short period of time, but we just want to keep alive how important um, um, Renoko was. And especially for us being involved in the Liverpool Black Men's Group, you know, um, when, the, when the news uh, just came out last week um, that he passed and he passed doing what he does best like yeah. he passed in Egypt you know um, and everything educating people and stuff um, there was a lot of pictures that were on social media and everything and so I just thought that it would really be good um, you know to revisit him with uh, the man himself James DeBell most definitely yeah and uh, I'm going to start with Patrick Graham now because um, Patrick's you know he's met Renoko Rashidi twice and um, you know he has his own he studied himself just like i've studied them so we can start with you patrick and tell us a bit about renoch rashidi and um, well again rest in peace the great man it was um, a real shock because just before he passed a few days before he, he, he'd posted saying that he was off on a, um, another one of his guided tours that he does in egypt and you know literally two three days after arriving he, he's tragically died out there um which Although it's tragic that he, he he's died, it was certainly fitting that he died in a place mm. like Egypt or Comet or any of the um, older names that you want to apply to it. He enjoyed travelling to Egypt. I think he'd been there at least maybe 25, six times or more. Yeah. <laughs> he'd made several journeys over the years. Um, you know, that was one of dozens of places he'd been yeah. around the world because he dedicated most of his life to explaining and exploring the black presence in throughout history throughout um throughout many places where they've lived or ruled or reigned within the world you know from the obvious places like egypt and, and parts of north africa um ethiopia the sudan and so forth to places where people would you know the general populace wouldn't associate the, that there's a black presence not just in antiquity but right up to this present day you know quite a substantial black presence throughout um throughout um, pacific islands and um, throughout the philippines throughout malaysia places like india you know so many different places just people just wouldn't envisage he he spends his time because what what we've got to look at 
um, when, when you're talking about you know, Rashidi, one of the things he, he concentrated on was the fact that we've all been raised, I know I certainly was, we've been raised with that myth that Africa has no history, mm -hmm. no writing, and very little of nothing other and than no people importance. running around yeah. um, semi-naked and, and living in huts and so forth. And you've got no history of astrology, of mathematics, of medicine, of science, all these different things of literature, of art, of architecture, all these things that they're saying they have no history of. Truth be known, they have a magnificent history of and um, cultures that are revered in the West, like the, the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, they actually revered the African cultures, Egypt in particular, um, with great, they held them in great reverence and, and, and great esteem and, and effectively worshipped a lot of the gods that they did and, and the names changed over time, as we've known. And Renoka Rashidi was basically a champion of saying, well, okay, in order to challenge that myth that Black people have no history, have no knowledge of all these different things, architecture, science, mathematics, astronomy, and so on. He said, well, the evidence of all this actually it still exists in Africa itself, but a large part of it exists in the, the looting and the pillaging that took place by many European nations and the artifacts that they looted and pillaged that um, actually prove this rich history in architecture, science, medicine, mathematics, and so forth is in these museums mm. in many different forms in the, the people who, who, who um, the statues and figureheads that are showcased in them so he's he's authored and edited up to 18 books mm. he would have done many papers over the years you know and i've just made a note of one or two books just you know in case people want to look them up but um there's african presence in early asia which it's actually a book by a man called Ivan Van Sertima, who, again, um, Ronoko Rashidi followed in the footsteps of this man and looked up to him. He was one of his, you know, in some ways, um, he was almost an understudy at times to, to mm. Van Sertima. And, you know, and he helped him, you know, progress his career and, and, and his research and so forth. And he edited that book. That was released in, in 85, and I think a second edition came out in 1987. Um a very good read. Another book which is actually a really good read is Uncovering the African Past. And that's basically, it, uh, Uncovering the African Past with a subtitle, the Ivan Van Sertima Papers. And although I haven't read that actual book, because it's entitled the Ivan Van Sertima Papers, I've read many books by Ivan Van Sertima, so I know the contents of that book and what it, what it discusses. And there's just, it's such a rich and vibrant history that he explores and talks about. And, you know, a great book where he, he's wrote is one called um, My Global Journey in Search of the African Presence. And then there's another one which is called Asata Garvey and Me, and that'll be Asata Shakur, who, who's the mother of the late Tupac, uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey, of course, great African um, um, Pan-African leader, and and obviously himself, and that talks about, and that book is aimed at children, wow. and, and talks about a lot of the journeys that he's done around the world, and opens them up to to a lot of the discoveries that he's made. But you know, I'll talk a bit more about yeah. you know some of the things and the images that he he, um, he highlights in various museums around the world. Yeah. So James, um, you know, like in your in your talks with him, I remember that there was a significant um, piece of uh, history historical statues um that um he talks a lot about which are the omec heads omec yeah now i mean like now can you just say a little bit about the omec heads because like a lot of people can identify the african features in the faces of the omec heads but they were treated like gods in various different countries and stuff like that so could you say a little bit about that yeah well it starts off with ivan van sertime this is um, the person who mentored Renoko Rashidi. One of his main mentors. He had other mentors, of course. Now, Van said to me, he, he done a book. Um, they came before Columbus. Mm. And it was a, it's a very interesting piece of work. Now, Renoko Rashidi, obviously, he's a lot younger than Ivan. Now, what he ended up doing, because Ivan was, he was like a, the global African presence, but he did. He, said, he even said himself, Ivan, I've never been to Asia. So when Renoko was going into Asia and discovering the African presence there, now Van Sertima probably read about these things. His books like Chancellor Williams, The Destruction of the Black Civilization. He'll mention about Africans in China and different places in the world. Now, 
Now, what he ended up doing is he took Ivan Van Sertima's work and elevated it even more globally, Australia, the Pacific Islands. And I've witnessed all this work as well. Now, when we're dealing with the Olmecs, now, I've studied it from many different angles, and I think Renoko Rashidi explains it the best. Mm -hmm. He explains it the best because he has actually excavated every single Olmec head. Van Sertima done so many. He is the first black man to excavate every single Olmec head. So that was it, it, that's history in itself. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, Renoko Rashidi, when he's talking about the Olmecs, he's explaining, yeah, well, you can see the Afrikoid features, but then you've got to look at other things. He's an anthropologist. He deals with DNA. So we know about an Australasian Pacific Islander presence in the Americas. Black people I'm talking about, not like your typical, what you see these days in Polynesia, but I'm talking about like people like Papua New Guinea. Hmm. They've got that DNA there. It was called Lucia, found in Brazil. So we know about, um, so what is believed to be that the, the people who come from the Pacific, black people, these were the Olmecs, but the people who they built the statues of were depicting the Africans because they would come back and forth on ships from West Africa or the Nile Valley. Now, let me, let me stop you there because this was one of the fascinating things um, about listening to your show. Um, you said about the ships coming from West Africa, like Mali, yeah. right? So even though when we talk about, and we've always bandied around the name Mansa Musa, what people don't get right is, is that Mansa Musa may indeed be the richest man of um, Mali, but it was his brother, Abu Bakr, uh, yeah, who yeah. actually sailed on ships. He created, they built three ships. Yeah took a whole community of West Africans and they traveled for them across the water, never to be seen again because they never returned. So the question really is, and now this was like, what century was this? 13th century? Yeah, about 1300s, yeah. something. So yeah. where did they go and where did they end up? So now when we have the world populated, like Cuba, Haiti, the New World, Brazil, all these other places... The these Kurds. are places where you see these Olmec heads. Yeah. Right? So isn't it possible? The Olmecs in Mexico. Yeah, I know. But, but, but there's other depictions. You could go to Peru and you can see depictions there. You could go to Brazil. You, right. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is my point. Yeah, yeah. Is it that these Africans from yeah. West Africa had traveled. We're talking about, about, I don't know, how many people were on three ships. That It was like about 300 people. Easy, right? Easily. Am I right? Easy. Easily. So... They, they traveled, never came home, but they populated the world out there and everything. And then we got these on make heads. Could I, could I just come in? Go for it. In well, relation just, to that. Let me just quickly, and then come quickly in. Just from what Renoko Rishidi explained about that. He said that because you've got people in America who want to claim indigenous American ancestry. And sometimes it can be to avoid your Africanness. Yeah. So you've got to be careful with that, you see. Do you know what I mean? So... How Renoko Rishidi explained that is that the people who came over, whether it was Mansa Musa or it was the Nile Valley. Abu Bakr. Yeah. So there's only small portions of people compared to the population that was in America at the time. So if you see like in China, for example, you got billions of people. Now they come out of the Mongoloid race. Now that's a huge race that went into America, Southeast Asia, and conquered all the black people originally. Mm -hmm. So that's basically... so. We have become the minority, whether the indigenous black people or whether they came from Africa. The ones who came from Africa would be not large numbers. We can't try and imagine them, if you act like it was the whole country. You know, we've got to be realistic about it. And that's why I did like Renoko Rishi when he explained that. It was pockets of the people. So they're going to get the large, the new people, the new wave of Mongoloid that was coming in was overpopulating the indigenous black people who were originally there, like Lucia, and that's why now. But then you got Christopher Columbus, who spotted oh, let's black not people. Go over the so let's Columbus, not go on to them. But go, what does Patrick, Patrick have to say? Anyway. <laughs> no, no, but it was just words to similar yeah. effect because um, it, it, it's not even a question of because there's, there's two issues here, like the the, the, the ships that travelled by Abu Bakr who went over. If they were never to be heard of again, mm. then it's 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 clearly difficult to say well what happened to them and mm -hmm. what didn't happen to them because they didn't report back to anyone to say we've done this we but done they that. didn't report going. back to West Africa yeah that's what exactly it is. so but the history of, of traveling to the Americas 
properly dates that anyway because we're talking you yeah, know that was easily. we're talking seven eight hundred years ago that mm-hmm. these voyages happened where there's, there's evidence you know that uh, now valley civilizations i.e. the egyptians and, and, and phoenicians and the likes yeah, the traveled Phoenician, over yeah. there far earlier um you know for those who don't know there's a natural current anyway from west africa that takes you right to the americas and can take you back again without even having to use sails and, and, mm, yeah. and so forth yeah. so that's, you know, that's one thing I know a lot about. Whether, it was, <laughs> yeah, whether that was discovered by accident or someone knew it through through astronomy and science and, 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 and geometry and so yeah. forth, you know, that, that's neither here nor there. The fact remains people had been going there for some time and mixing with the population yeah. that were already there and bringing technology and science and, and learning and so forth. You know, the, the heads, the Olmec heads um, from Mexico and places like... Um, I think it's Lorenzo and Zapata. Yeah, yeah. Zapata. Um, massive heads. They stand. Some of them stand ten foot tall, six foot wide, six foot deep. You know, these are ginormous heads, and they actually appear like they are part of a larger statue. Although there's never been any evidence yeah. of of them larger statues being found, but they certainly have the look that they are part of a larger structure, which given the dimensions of the head you're talking a massive structure of maybe a hundred feet or more mm. similar in terms of some of the colossus statues that are built that were built by the likes of ramses the second or ramses the great as a lot oh, of yeah, people yeah. know similar in size to some of them structures um, i'm not talking about the the ramuseum where the ones are on the outside mm. of the mountain where i'm one about the ones that are freestanding yeah yeah um, in luxor is it yeah they'd, you know they'd be similar in size to them things so you know this is as i say such a rich history because what renoko done he goes around the world and part of his his, his, his travels included liverpool because liverpool has a great collection of, of, of african um pieces of artwork and, and mummies and, and so forth and one of the best um outside of london in, in, within within Britain, if not the best outside of London, within Britain, when it comes to the Egyptian collections and, and other parts, and he photographs these images, he puts them in books, he writes about them, he talks about them, he researches them, he adds research to them, he will liaise with the museums themselves to try and influence how these things are explained or depicted in the museums and so forth, because some of them are not labelled properly, um, and as I said, this is the vast evidence that exists in museums across the world, famous museums like the Museum in New York, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, and the Museum in Berlin, in Munich, obviously London Museum, British Museum, Natural History Museum, and places like that, um, Liverpool World Museum. Museums all over the world have got have, have absolutely full to the brim of black artefacts from many different time periods of many different black cultures and civilizations from within africa yeah um, including the the, the island of madagascar like you guys the things you guys are talking about these are things that i'd heard before and this is this is why this is the only thing where trickle down actually works because we all know about trickle down economics that Mm -hmm. supposedly works Mm. trickle down knowledge is a big thing like i had heard all of the things that you're speaking of but i'd never really put names to it i'd heard it from friends of mine who had done extensive studies i'd heard it from you know i'd seen little things here and here and there but never really put names to to who discovered these things or who really started these studies so this is why all of this and us doing these types of podcasts is really important because some people know these things but don't know well but it's not an it's not an educational thing and that's what i think is important yeah. is that like especially like we, we did the fatherhood fatherhood on podcast i mean it's important for our children to know this kind of stuff exactly. why is it not available you know and everything for people well, and that's why it's important and, and that's the thing i mean it's it's it is available that's the thing well, yeah, it, it yeah, is yeah, it's yeah, available. Yeah, it available it's just a matter of you know, no we, and, and then that's the other thing I, I've always, I've always said is like we as as a people, generally, not even just black people, but like we 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 put so much um, emphasis on what we're being taught without actually thinking. Well, actually, maybe we should be teaching our own children these things. Yeah. It's like we say, oh, the school's not teaching them. So, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? No, it that does, makes sense. You know what I mean? Education starts in the house. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you there know? there are so many things that I learn from outside of school that 
are that have informed the things that they did tell me in school do you see what i'm saying yeah no definitely so it's like you know all of the you know theorems and history (coughs) and all of those types of things um you know, it's as a, you go back to the fatherhood thing. It's you know the same things I say to my son. It's like, yeah, this is what they're telling you, but here's the other stuff that yeah. they're not going to tell you, or and they and don't and have just, time. Just, just to add to that as well, obviously, yeah, education does start in the home, but you know what is an unfortunate reality as well is a lot of parents are not equipped with that knowledge to start that education yeah, in the home. Exactly. So, it's how do you address yeah. that and balance? Because yeah. the major institutions of the world. Are, are run from what we call a Eurocentric point of view. Exactly. So right. Ivan Van Sertiman himself, when he was um, um, the, the, the statues that you know Renoko Rashidi, well the Al Makeds, which he later wrote about himself and, and studied a lot more. When when he first came across them, because you know they were found. I can't remember the exact year they were found. It might have been in the thirties. The first ones were discovered, but over time, you know, they were discovered more and more. Um, it's not just heads. He was giant like round stone balls, which were like perfect ge- geometrically, you know, which were created somehow. Some yeah. People tried to claim they were a natural phenomenon. Where <laughs> others said, well, no, these were clearly sculpted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah clearly I, lo- sculpted. I love people who do but, that. Yeah, know, that just, that's the, the colors that they have to work with. Ivan Van Sertima <laughs> actually had a battle with certain... Um, academic institutions for many years yeah. when when before he could actually physically go and see them because for a, for a long time he was banned from traveling from america under all these um mm. communist inquiries and all of this thing yeah. and because he's studying <laughs> black history his passport was confiscated mm-hmm. so he's trapped in america so he, a lot of his studies he had to do through books and research yeah. and it, he had a big battle which went on for many years where eventually images of, were released he already had images of the Olmec heads but the images what he was after was the back of the Olmec heads yeah. and when he got the images oh, of the back of braids. the Olmec heads they depicted what were clearly braids yeah. plaits a, 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 a hairstyle which is significant yeah. and identifiable with black culture yeah. with black people but it, and, and, and this was hidden by the Eurocentric academic world and for obvious reasons they don't want black people to know for one and they don't even want black people to know as well they don't want anybody to know that we have this rich history because they want to perpetuate the myth that Mm. africa is nothing it's a dark continent and it was full of savages and so we came along and civilized them but in speaking to you know the fact that some people aren't um unequipped for that it's i don't think it's just that i think we're some people don't know but some people will will seek you know yeah. what I'm saying, and that's I think that's the important thing. It's that not saying that you're not you're not equipped to do it. It's just because everybody's equipped to learn something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody's equipped, and then you know, go and learn with your children. You know what I mean. Go find these things on your own with your children. If you're that, if if it's if it's if you figure it's important. Yeah, because that's the other thing is like, as as we live in this capitalist you know Eurocentric society, we know that people don't have time. You know what I mean? Time is the the one the number one thing. You know, we have so many people who are out there working two, three jobs just to make 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 ends meet. So their children are left. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, it, it even when it comes down to technology and things like that, we tell we tell people, Oh, don't put don't let your kids be on the on the iPad all day. It's like, well, you know, mm. how about teaching them how to use the iPad to do other things other than just play games? You see what I'm yeah. saying? No, that that that's definitely relevant because what, what you're talking about, a capitalist Eurocentric yeah, society. Yeah. A capitalist Eurocentric society is designed, you know, not just to oppress and suppress the knowledge of black people, but even their own white yeah, people. Of, of everybody, it's designed yeah. for that purpose. And what, what it actually does is it learns people, but educates themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. And the al- analogy I always use to make people you know, see this in just basic terms is, to any dog owner or anyone who knows the behavior of a dog, you get a stick, you throw it, the dog will go and get it. You get a stick, you throw it, the dog will go and get it. So you're learning the dog, you're teaching the dog to do that. But if you could actually educate a dog, after you're doing that a couple of times, the dog will tell you, get it yourself, it's your turn. <laughs> but that's education, that's the difference between education. Mm. Education allows someone to think and yeah. express themselves. When you learn something, you become robotic. Yeah, and, and that, that's what the system yeah. does to people. It makes them robotic where you haven't got the time to learn these things because you've been taught to not even have the desire to want to know these things or yeah. to see the importance of it. Because like the great Marcus 
Garvey says, a people without the knowledge of the history and culture is like a tree without roots. And again, you take away the roots from a tree which go back deeper than the tree stands taller, the tree will fall down. And that's the same for the people. If they don't understand the roots, the basis of where they come from, they will keep falling down and they will never be able to stand strong. So... Mm. Yeah, well, you know what, with Renoka Rashidi as well, I mean, 125 countries, this man, like, he's the type to, do, he's done the work of, like, 10 scholars or something, you know, it's, he just, every day, posting, he, this, he, this is someone who really dedicated the life, and from primary research, doing it myself, when I went into the Philippines and I witnessed the African presence, ancient black peoples, and I said to them, I've got videos, I said, Jews know Africa, and I asked them that because this was, I went going in on a tour. So the different you do a tour, then they know you're coming at two o'clock and then they're going to show you how to do this and that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I've only done a tour once. I don't do them anymore. So when I've gone in and hired the Jeep, the person driving me said, well, I'm not here to guide you. You're the guide. You do what you do. So when I've asked them about Africa, I just got a shock when they all were aware and I've got the video of sent it. Patrick, you've seen the part, the video anyway, mm -hmm. where they're screaming about Africa. And I was like, and then even with the Mani tribe in Thailand, I showed them pictures of other tribes from around the world so they can see the black presence himself. Because you don't know when, when an anthropologist goes into them, maybe, I don't know what they're doing, they just give them the swab and then put their own little stories and stuff. They ignore oral traditions after time anyway. You know, it's all about science. But, the influence when I, like I say, Renoko actually told me himself, which I was quite surprised. He was surprised I visited the money and the Etta in the Philippines and the Ardenjaz in Malaysia. And he told me he hasn't done that. And now I was shocked because I said, hold on a second, wait a minute. I was going there because you went there, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> then you found out that. No, he didn't actually go in there. He actually done lectures. It didn't mean he actually went into the area to visit the people. Because these are like seven hour drives, eight, nine, ten hours. And that's why, like, on the Zoom, if you watch it back, he's, like, quite surprised at some of the stuff. But he's just the biggest influence. Who I, can, I can actually say he's my biggest influence. I have many influences. Jo Dr. John Andrew Clark. I think Do Dr. John Andrew Clark, one of my favourites. Dr. Ben Yoshi Ben Yakinen. Now, he's born in Ethiopia, so he, he understands history a little differently when you're born somewhere because mm. you can have access yeah. to stuff other than other people. <laughs> Chancellor Williams... Like you've seen before, Patrick, about the struggles that Van Satan was, was having to publish stuff. And the same with um, our brothers himself, Chancellor Williams. Part when he wanted to go into South Africa, you know, it was like a big thing and all that, you know. Or he wanted to go to Sudan, he wanted to go South Sudan. But at the end of the day, you know what? Anyone else got anything else to say anyway? Just, just, just to, um, two really good quotes that I've made a note of, of, of um from, from Renoko Rashidi. The first is, history is the light that illuminates the past and the key that unlocks the door to the future. And that's just another way of, of, of the Martin, um, sorry, the Marcus Garvey saying about the tree and its roots and the people mm, knowing yeah. history and culture is the same difference. Yeah. Another one which we've just touched on that, what Jay was mentioned before about teaching our children and, and so forth, which is basically, um, and it's aimed at, you know, he's talking about black people, black children. Um, the worst crime you can commit is to teach a child that their history began with slavery. Wow. You know, and, yeah. and, and it's true because mm. the history of slavery, um, of shackled slavery, that is, um, European shackled transatlantic slavery, goes back to... Um, you know, the 1500s, yeah? You know, people put it down to... Um, the 1400s, rather, people put it down to Columbus's voyage of so-called discovery in, in 1492. Um, so that's like a 400, 500-year period we're talking about. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, I remember going... When I've done workshops with youngsters, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds, 13 years old schools, and I, I'll pose the question, tell me something about black history. Hands will go up, I'll say yes, and they'll mention the slave trade, or they might mention um, um, Martin Luther King. And I say, OK, well, tell me something about black history before the slave trade. You know, I remember a little girl innocently said, oh, oh, well, they captured the slaves and put them on the ship, you know, which is it's true, because that was just before yeah, the yeah, slave yeah. trade. And I said, well, no, tell me something 500 years or 1,000 years 
before the slave trade and every one of them looked at me like I'd suddenly started talking in some ancient and forgotten language yeah. and they couldn't understand the word I was saying as if to say well there's no such thing that's what the looks expressed to me well what does that even can mean can I ask you a question Patrick you know where when you first seen Reno Rishidi explain about black people in China in ancient times I don't mean the first people I'm talking about the civilizations you know the Shang Dynasty uh, or, or even these black, the black presence of these indigenous peoples in Asia. Mm -hmm. Was you shocked when you first? I mean, I was shocked. I wasn't shocked simply first because like, I've read, I've read many of Van Sertima's works. Yeah, um, going back to the eighties. Yeah, some of his early books, and um, I've read other things from people like Doctor Joseph Ben Jackman, John Andrew Clark. Yeah, and what what I wasn't shocked simply because. I've, I've, as I said, I've read stuff about people in not just them places, but many places throughout um, the Indonesian islands, yeah, um, the the Philippine islands, and, and the so forth. Peninsula. Where you're talking about histories that go back. Where um, I remember watching a documentary once, and it was showing. Well, the only thing that was not shocked, but it was surprising, surprising. that the numbers of the people who still actually exist there to this day. Oh, most you're not talking little isolated pockets of a couple dozen here and a couple yeah. dozen there. We're talking thousands and thousands of people hidden away from everyday, um, the everyday eye, the everyday viewer. So it, it's almost as if even people who recognise and accept that these people, these black people existed there at one time, they thought, oh, well, me, did you all died out or they've re yeah, yeah. moved on and migrated somewhere else? Yeah. But they're actually hidden communities, um, hidden nations almost, Keep who were going. just secluded and isolated and secluded in the poorest parts of, of, of um, them countries. But it's just been, we could go on forever, you know, and obviously I'm aware of time's running short, we have to end this, but... Just thanks for, for us being here today. It's been great to be able to discuss Renoko Rashidi's legend will live on. Just some little bits of information. There is a Facebook page, which I'm sure will carry on in his honour. It's, yeah. it's called In the Museums and Galleries of the World, you know, by Renoko Rashidi that he facilitated. But other admins of that page will surely carry it on, and I'm sure they'll get more traffic now and more interest in, in, in just supporting and promoting that, the, the much the much needed very useful, very informative, very educational work that he's done. I Rest in peace, Renoko Rashidi. Ho it was a pleasure to meet you. Hopefully yeah, um, he gets more credit now for his work, you know, because it's just difficult trying to feed people African history sometimes. But, you know, we're going to have to end out the show today. Um, we'll come to the end of the show, season three, and with the Black Men's Group. So, you know, we're going to end this out now on Discovering season three. I'm your host, James DeBow. And thank you all for coming, Patrick. Thank you. Good and having Jay us. Jay Blades. Good having me. Thank no you. No problem.